Hi, everyone. Right now we're looking at W.H. Auden's poem in, the, in memory of W.B. Yeats. So if you, we first look at the poem here, in the very beginning, we get a lot of images of coldness and death, right? The dead of winter, frozen, deserted, snow, the mercury sinking in the thermometer, a dying day, right? And all of those descriptions really emphasize the physical and that which we can measure, right? And then we have this, the last two lines of the first stanza, when instruments we have agree, right? So this emphasis on measurement and the physicality of the environment, the day of his death was a dark, cold day. But the world goes on as it does. And here in the third stanza, we start getting a distinction between kind of the physical world of the body and the metaphysical world right which is really just a fancy way of saying beyond the physical right so the intellectual realm the spiritual realm right all of these different uh dimensions to the universe which are not physical per se um and then we keep going right of what happens to him once he will die um and life goes on right and the poet will live through his words right like go, life goes back to normal um and then notice these two lines right here right? <clears throat> the poor have the sufferings to which they are fairly accustomed, and each in the cell of himself is almost convinced of his freedom, right? So that idea that there's some, there's something holding us back, right? There's some kind of cage to this kind of physical realm that we live in. Um, and then this repetition, right? And anytime you see repetition, especially of a complete line, uh, helps you know that that is important in the poem. And what instruments we have agree, the day of his death was a dark, cold day, right? So again, that emphasis on the physical and what we can see and what we can measure. And then we have part two of the poem, right? And who's this you, right? You kind of goes back to the title, right, of W.B. Yeats. You were silly like us, your gifts survived us all, right? So this idea of survival um, and the physical, right? What lasts once we die and our physical bodies die? Um, for poetry makes nothing happen, right? It's not part of that physical world, right? It survives in the valley of its making where executives would never want to tamper flows on south from ranches of isolation and the busy griefs, raw towns that we believe and die in, it survives, a way of happening, a mouth, right? So poetry is not measurable like the physical, but it can't die like the physical, right? It survives and it outlives kind of this physical world that we get. Well, what does that all mean, right? And then we have this third part to this poem that kind of ties it all together for us. And here we kind of shift in tone and style to more of a more of a poetic, right? I said here in my note, this is much more of a traditional kind of what you would expect to read in a kind of a classical poem. Um, with the four lines, we have the rhyming couplets on the end. Um, but here, look, what does it say? And the living nations wait, each sequestered in its hate intellectual disgrace stares from every human face and the seas of pity lie locked and frozen in each eye right so to me that's really implying that our physical realm is not enough right and that just thinking from that perspective can be very limiting our intellect can be limiting it can freeze our perspective right locked and frozen and people get kind of calloused into their way of thinking um but then what do we get about poetry right follow poet follow right to the bottom of the night with your unconstraining voice still persuade us to rejoice with the framing of a verse make a vineyard of the curse oh i love that line right have something grow something life-sustaining right come out of these curses that we live with seeing of human unsuccess in a rapture of distress right all these paradoxes are so beautiful, I think, right? 
sing. Usually when we think of singing in celebration, we don't think of unsuccess, we think of success, right? But here he's saying the same, the exact opposite, right? Sing in our failures, right? In a rapture of distress, right? A rapture is the last thing you think of when you think of distress, um, but it makes perfect sense here, right? When he's talking about poetry. In the desert of the heart, let the healing fountain start. In the prison of his days, teach the free man how to praise, right? So we really see coming through in the end, right? This idea of poetry as being celebratory, poetry is giving us freedom, right? From this physical realm that we are stuck in, in many regards. Um, so yeah, now I'm excited for the discussion board to hear what you think about this poem 